Well, you can see that the waistband is completed. Well, not quite. One last thing to do, and you will need to choose this. Do you want to put a button and buttonhole on here, or would you like to put a hook and eye? I will likely just finish it off with a hook and eye. And then, the very last thing to do is the band at the bottom of the skirt. And we went ahead and we put the skirt on the mannequin, took a look at it and said, do we like it with the band or without the band? And the mutual decision was, we're going to put the band on it. So let me describe how I cut the piece for the band. Now, I wanted approximately an inch of band showing once the seam allowance was stitched away. So how I measured this was approximately three and a half inches wide, and that allowed for five-eighths of an inch on both edges of the band, and then when it's folded, there would be approximately one inch left. So if I mark off five-eighths of an inch, which is where my seam allowance will be sewn, that's like an inch to an inch and an eighth, which is just perfect. Now, how did I cut this band? Well, it was an arbitrary width because your band could be wider or narrower, but the length of the band had to be the total circumference of the skirt. And so when that was measured, it just so happened that it was 43 inches and my fabric was about 43 and a half inches on the crosswise grain line. So I just cut a strip going all the way across and it meant that I'm going to need to put very narrow seam allowance joining this whole circle together. So I have pressed it with wrong sides together and what I'm doing now is taking the band and putting right sides together. And I'm just going to pin it to stabilize this and I already know because I've tested it that I can only have a very narrow seam allowance. That's all I can have so that the band ends up being on a one-to-one -one with the skirt. So that's about all that I can get for a seam allowance is right there. Now one thing I would like to just mention to you is when you put this contrasting band on the bottom of this skirt. Keep in mind that if you're a very short person, that somebody viewing you, where does their eye go? It goes to the area of detail. So that means likely a viewer's eye is going to head down towards your knees or wherever you've decided to have your hem level. So if you're very, very short, this might make you look a little bit shorter to put a band on it. But anybody who's of medium to tall height, you could certainly do this and get away with it. Or, you know, if you're very, very short, you might want to use a less dominant color, maybe one of the patterns that you've chosen. Or if you were doing your skirt out of all one solid color, then it would be fine to put a band on the bottom. It would just be a nice little piece of trim and it would be in lieu of the traditional hem that gets turned up inside. So that's just something to keep in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and start the seam allowance here. I'm going to set the needle down exactly where I want it to go, and then I will lower the presser foot. So that's about the width of half of the presser foot on this particular machine. Now, I do know that I should be sewing in black, but because white is on, I'm just going to go ahead and do it like this because down the road I'm going to surge the whole thing. So right now all I'm doing is just sewing the center seam. Okay. Now this seam just needs to be pressed or in my case I'm just going to finger press it open and then I'm going to fold right sides together and just put a pin in it to hold that. And then what I'm going to do 
is mark the other halfway point, which will be the center of the skirt in the front. Okay, so that's exactly half right there. And now I need to mark the center of the skirt in the front as well. And here's the front of the skirt. I'm just going to fold those two princess seams together and I'll put a pin at halfway point. And then I will take the right sides and I'll put them together. So let's see, what do I want to do here? I want to go like this. So right side of center back is where the seam is going to be that I created, that very narrow seam. And now I'm going to go to the front and if luck will have it, the width of that seam that I did in the back of the circle will be exactly the width that I needed it to be so that the pieces join together. And that looks like it's going to. So now I'm going to go into a section of pinning here and I'll likely just fast forward the footage because you don't need to see me do a lot of, of this uh, detailed pinning. All right, that all lined up pretty good. It's time to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to do a 5 8 inch seam allowance. skirt band is on, the seam allowance will be pressed to the inside and let me just kind of move this up like this so that you can see what it looks like. I think it looks really cute and I'm glad that I went ahead and put the band on. Now to finish this on the inside I am going to take this to the serger and I'm going to neaten that edge and then it's going to get pressed up towards the skirt and if you wanted to you could then come back and you could top stitch about an eighth to a quarter of an inch away just to hold that seam allowance in place. I'll see what this looks like once I've got it surged and pressed up, but I may leave it just like this as well. And so if you don't have a serger, you've likely heard me say this before, you could double stitch it or you could simply zigzag it and then or you could trim the edge and then zigzag it and then press upward. But you likely are going to want to do some kind of seam finish on there so you don't have the fraying fibers of the, of the fabric, you know, coming down and being a nuisance. So that is the very last step of the skirt. And in the next short video, we'll take a look at it on the mannequin and all dressed up. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, I invite you to join the Sherpa Designs community if you haven't already. And you can do that in three easy steps. Number one, make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Surefit Designs. Secondly, make sure to sign up for our newsletter list. And you can do that by going to surefitdesigns.com and there are free gifts to get you started. And if you happen to be a Facebook fan, we do have a private group go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash surefit designs request to join make sure you answer the three questions and I'll approve you thanks so much for watching